Welcome to Storytime with Tabitha. I'm so glad you're here. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Today we're reading Miriam at the River by Jane Yolen. I creep to the riverside in the soft dark of night's end. In a woven basket lies my little brother. So young, he does not even have a name. He sleeps and in his dreams, his legs and arms move as if he is swimming. I am afraid and not afraid. I am only seven years old. We are slaves in Egypt. And in Egypt, Pharaoh's words and Pharaoh's laws must be obeyed, even the wicked ones. But God's law is what I follow, and God's voice is the one I hear, even when others do not listen to what God has to say. We get to the Nile before the sun rises. For now, it is just a red line spilling along the horizon. I look up the water and down, then to the hiding place I have chosen. Sedge, bulrush, papyrus, reeds, all I need to hide my brother from Pharaoh's men and hide me from prying Egyptian eyes. I say a quick blessing over him, for he is so small, so much at risk. I give him a sister's kiss. Once again, I look around, then I place the basket in the river. Near the bending reeds, the basket is heavy and I am small. I pretend I am simply a child playing by the waterside, but under my robe, my heart beats so loudly, I am certain anyone near will hear. One quick push and the basket sails toward the middle of the reeds, where the water is coolest. Mother has woven the basket so tightly it does not sink, but skips over little schools of fish, glossy as silver bangles. Then the sun comes out, making the bangles look like Pharaoh's gold. The basket skims past a yellow-billed stork who stands with angel wings held high, past an ibis dipping its long beak into the water, so very like a scribe's pen in ink. Past a hippopotamus wallowing in the small wake of the basket's passing. The Nile water ripples, then parts on either side of the basket. Suddenly, in my mind, I see another water parting. Fiercer, higher, a great wall of it. What water is this, I wonder? For it is surely not the Nile. I could ask God for an answer, though often God's answers are not clear. Father says prophecy is a cloudy glass, a muddy river, a curtain pulled a bit aside. But I ask God anyway. Like a soft breeze that comforts in the middle of an Egyptian summer, God whispers in my ear, Your little brother is in my care until he comes home. But where is home, I wonder? Then, taking a deep breath, I accept that answer, leaving my brother to be rocked in the river's arms. I whisk my footprints away so there can be no blame. Sometimes courage comes from what you do, sometimes from what you do not do. Now I hide near a palm tree, sitting on my heels to wait. All that I've dreamed, all that I've seen in my mind's eye depends on Pharaoh's daughter. 
I hope she is not too late. There are crocodiles in the river. There is fate. And here she comes, a young woman to bathe in the waters of the Nile. She is tall, slim, dark, beautiful. She has no child of her own. She will hear a baby's cry, draw him from the water. She will be mother to a slave who will capture her heart until another water parts. She commands her handmaidens to pull the basket from the reeds. She picks the baby out of his water cradle. I shall call him Moses, she tells her servants, for he was drawn from the water. I sneak away, quiet as a whisper. This is the story I will tell my parents, and with it for now we shall be content until one day all the world will know my brother's name. The end. Thanks for listening.